What's up, y'all, and welcome back to Experiencing the City with Michael Matheny. That is me, where I'm on a mission to document the sights, sounds, tastes, feels, and smells of cities, countries, and natural landmarks around the world. This week, I'm in Lima, Peru, with one of my best friends and fellow travel buddies, Brando Dill. Hey, everybody. How's it going? We're excited to bring you along. Let's do it. Let's get started. Lima is often viewed by world travelers as a stopover destination en route to Peru's famous Incan capital, Cusco. While Cusco and the fascinating ruins of Machu Picchu deserve the global attention they receive, Lima is an incredible destination in its own right and deserves a much more thorough visit than a night or two. Today, my mission is to immerse you in my three-day adventure in Peru's colorful, sprawling capital city experientially through the sights, sounds, tastes, feels, and smells of the city. We'll journey to the eclectic beachside squares of Miraflores, the gritty heart of historic Lima, and the bohemian markets of Barranco, experience traditional Peruvian art and dance through a show at Brisas del Titicaca and the Museo Larco, dive into the Pacific Ocean and taste the world-renowned Peruvian ceviche, tipsy-inducing pisco sours, and one of the most interesting dishes I've ever tried, guinea pig. Here's how to spend three days in Peru's underrated and exhilarating capital, Lima. In a testament to the genuine kindness of Peruvians, Brando and I awoke to a delicious breakfast of rich Peruvian coffee, eggs, and bread rolls before heading out on our first day's journey. Right off the bat, Lima smells tropical, with added layers of florals, mustiness, and auto fume. Mountainous beige hills surround the sprawling city, covered in arid desert brush. With 10 million people, traffic in Lima can be quite congested, but eventually, we arrived at our first destination within the city, Miraflores. A sprawling, beachside district towering on a cliff above the Pacific Ocean, Miraflores is lush, green, and incredibly clean. One of the cultural heartbeats of Lima, there's a tangible sense of fun and festivity in the summer air. The sounds of crowds of local and tourist pedestrians, street music, dancing, chatter, and crashing Pacific waves fill the air. On the beach itself, a bustling, cheerful family atmosphere awaits. You know, one of the best parts about being out here on the beach here in Lima is how peaceful it is with just the crashing waves and the seagulls chirping, but also just how happy everybody looks, all the families that are out here, and it's just, uh, it's just such a relaxing atmosphere. The air smells like salt water and fish, which is just what you would want at the beach. And if you can't tell, the waves are huge and loud, and it's amazing. Avenue Juan Larco, one of the main strips through Miraflores, is filled with an air of festivity and is packed with glittering lights, shoppers, and diners. Traffic, sirens, clattering footsteps, and chattering crowds accompanied by the smells of chlorine, salt water, damp concrete, and storefront air fresheners create an atmosphere of both bustle and relaxation. Surfing, parasailing, and shopping may be some of Miraflores' highlights, but I found that the parks are what truly do the trick. Named in reverence of former U.S. President John F. Kennedy, a park with a lovely, carnival-like atmosphere awaits, with markets, playgrounds, dense tropical tree cover, and hundreds of tabby cats wandering freely. So here in John F. Kennedy Park, there are hundreds of just little tabby and manx cats just wandering about. And Brando's made some friends. A fun little addition, the cats have little food and water bowls throughout the park and love being pet. You may fall in love with one, be warned. Within the park is a beautiful twin bell-towered cathedral overlooking the cobbled square beneath. At the center of JFK Park sits a small open amphitheater where throughout the day, you'll find dozens of people, mostly older, dancing in pairs and solo to traditional Peruvian folk tunes. There's a huge crowd of onlookers within the rotunda of seats, and a generally cheerful sensation is felt in this backyard party-like atmosphere. So we're here at Miraflores. Um, this is kind of the beachfront district here in Lima, and it's just unreal. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous. The ocean uh, to our left is just fast and loud. The waves are huge. There's beautiful tropical plants. There's kids running around screaming. I mean, it's just fantastic, yeah. Malecon de Miraflores. Malecon de Miraflores. It's a beautiful And if you look out into the distance, I mean, you've got the mountains, the ocean. I mean, it's, oh, it's just incredible. 
Another beautiful park within Mira Flores, Parque Antonio Remindi, is filled with tropical and desert plants overlooking the ocean from the stone cliff side and comes complete with a towering, fully functional lighthouse, one of Peru's most iconic spots. From above this green promenade, you can spot surfers and parasailers, along with the crashing grayish-blue waves of the ocean. Given Lima's size, the historic center of the city is proportionally large. Our first day in the city didn't involve the Plaza Mayor as we wanted to give that district a proper full day, but the edges of the historic district are just as fascinating. Filled with low rises, incredibly green trees, and dense traffic day round, the outer edges of Lima's historic center are a bit grungy and dirty, but burst to the seams with Peruvian culture. Walking through the district, you'll find many street market stands selling fresh fruit, juices, canned drinks, and various snacks, from package labels to locally made street food. Most of the buildings in the historic core are a bit worn, with aged and grungy facades painted primarily in pale beiges, with splashes of bright blues, oranges, greens, and yellows. The architecture meshes a blend of Arabian, Spanish, and mid-century modern designs, along with the more humble and simplistic facades of Central America. Parque Neptuno, in the city center, however, is covered in white stone classical buildings and monuments, and shaded with tropical trees and plants. In the park, you'll notice just how tropical Lima can feel despite technically being an arid zone. The air here is hot and sticky. As you place yourself imaginatively in this green oasis amidst Lima's urban sprawl, you hear the sounds of auto traffic, people talking, loudly, craftsmen working in street stands, and the grumble of bus engines. Yeah, you'll notice in this part of the city there are a lot of big monuments and statues and big public circles. One thing I've really noticed about Lima is that even though it's a humongous city, 10 million people, it doesn't have a very dense urban feel. Like, there's a lot of auto traffic, um, but it is still really beautiful. Iglesia de Lima is a towering stone church in the historic center with an almost Arabian dome. Inside is a navy blue, fan-vaulted nave ceiling with stars painted on and a glittering golden altar with golden mosaic tile, marble columns, and marble floors. It smells of perfumes, is warm with a breeze, with the loud outdoor sounds creeping in. One of Peru's staple dishes is pork, and at Cuchitanta, I received a perfect introduction to it. Pan con chicharron features a toasted hoagie roll, a sweet potato base, and a seasoned pork belly with Peruvian hot pepper sauce. Alongside a cold drink, this is a perfect way to beat the heat on a Peruvian summer's day. There's much more to explore in the historic district, and we'll head back there on day three, but for now, let's head back to Miraflores for some of Peru's famed cuisine. Pisco sours are made from pisco liquor alongside citrus juice, agave, and egg. Pisco sours are delicious, but as the name implies, are indeed very sour. At a 4-ounce pour of liquor, it's easy to understand what just two will have you on the dance floor. Ceviche is one of Peru's culinary claims to fame, and after a dish from Punto Azul, it's easy to see why. With fresh fish doused heavily in a lemon sauce and served alongside giant white corn and potatoes, Peruvian ceviche is both rich and light. While ceviche is better eaten as an appetizer, nuestros chupes with shrimp, a traditional Peruvian stew, is a great way to round the meal out as an entree, consisting of lima beans, cubed queso, giant white corn, and shrimp, alongside a thick, fishy broth. After a day of oceanside adventures, hundreds of cats, delicious food, beautiful parks, and the national drink that leaves a lasting punch, it's time to rest up for the next day and the Lima experience.